wanted to briefly go over the process of setting up the um, IBL or, or hemispherical dome and iRay Plus. Um, to do that, I've got the scene here that I've rendered uh, last week. Uh, there's no light set up in it. Uh, you don't set it up in the uh, scene environment as you would in some other render engines. As you can see, there's nothing in the scene environment. Uh, I have these menus on a separate separate screen that I drag in. But anyway, uh, to do that, to do this, what you do is go to your uh, lights and iRay Plus, and there's a IBL light source. Just click it and add it to your scene. I uh, move this around. You can kind of see that it's giving you a representation of this dome. And it's grayed out at the moment because there's nothing assigned to it. Um, and the parameters here, it's looking for an image, so I can just add uh, an HDR to it. I have some, I'll show you in just a second, uh, in my material editor already. I'm just dragging over. Uh, because this is a scene that I've already set up when I added the uh, this IBL node in, uh, it comes in with shadows already enabled. I think that's off, uh, but basically that just lets it catch shadows on the ground. Um, you can also have it uh, catch reflections. Uh, you can change the ground height, which lowers and raises where those shadows are. Um, again, you can mirror your your HDR if you wanted to. It, it actually comes in, I think, rotated or automatically. A lot of times you have to put like negative one, uh, but I think it automatically does that, so I typically leave that unchecked. Um, it does come in, uh, it defaults to sphere, spherical uh, mapping, which is not what you want. Um, you see this gray dot, uh, sphere here. Um, I don't know what why it does that, but it's because I'm using a perspective viewport. If I add Control C to add a, a camera in, it goes away. Um, again, not sure why it's doing that, but anyway, uh, let me go back and select this light node. So with with spherical mapping, as you can as you know, um, basically your objects look like they're in the middle of the uh, HDR. They're never like planted so you can switch over to hemispherical mapping and now uh, they track into the HDR environment um, each one you'll have to adjust this radius and and cam height uh, setting uh, basically the cam height is where you want the uh, HDR was captured uh, but you can adjust that uh, you want this uh, radius to be large enough to encompass the whole scene um, it, clearly, if it's too small, you can see this <laughs> comes in like that. But I set it uh, again. This is per scene and actually per HDR, and they're all kind of different um, ground height. I, I look at that kind of a scale. Uh, you can see go up, and down, but probably something around 2,000. Look about right. I think that's what I use for the renders anyway. Uh, now, because this is uh, the HDR is mapped onto this light source or IBL light, uh, you can move it around. Say, if you wanted to offset uh, the object a little bit from the environment, you can easily do that. Of course, you can rotate it too, um, something like so. You can change the intensity, uh, but that, you know this is just a viewport uh, approximation of it. What we can do is uh, start up uh, Active Shade. I'll let this load. Okay, so as you can see, you can move around in kind of real time. And again, I may want to increase this to stretch out the dome a little bit and the ground. Another thing to note is that uh, uh, it looks kind of distorted around the edges. Um, uh, in the actual production render that gets better it's like it's showing you a, a lower res preview and active shade so that'll clear up a little bit it'll still have some distortion uh, but you know if you zoom in close enough um, it's not as noticeable but it, it, it does get better in the production mode than than active shade but uh, that I mean that's the basics of it there's really not a lot to it um, I like using these 
to make previews uh, or, or develop the looks of, of my scenes and things like that. Sometimes you can render finals with it. Uh, it just depends on the client and if it's just something for fun or not. Um, you know, if you throw in a lot of depth of field, sometimes that helps uh, to mask out uh, some of the flaws built into this method. Uh, but I can just drag another HDR over to here and let it load and again you can get a different look. Uh, again as you can see the scale is you know is off on this one so I can bring down the cam height uh, to tighten that up. And two if I wanted to offset this a little bit um, maybe something like that get away from that curb I could do that. Obviously not a fantastic uh, <laughs> scene for this car, but uh, just a demo. Let me throw one more, I guess, for good measure, just to throw this in here. Again, with the the scale is going to be off, so we can adjust the the cam height. The radius usually stays about the same. Uh, once you set it for the the scene radius, it, you probably won't change it too much. But Move this over. What I'll do right now is see. You can see the distortion here. I'll stop this and actually render this in production mode to see if it looks any different. I'll pause this for a second. Alright, so it's started up again. It, obviously the rocks are going to look kind of flat, but again if you zoom in or if you use depth of field you can kind of mask out some of this this stuff for uh, quick previews or, or look development. It, it's a pretty neat tool. Um, I, li I like using it. You know, Corona has uh, a good hemispherical node as uh, V-Ray uh, also has that. Uh, in V-Ray it's in their HDR map. Um, but uh, they they all work pretty well in pretty much the same way. Um, but I guess that's that's pretty much it. Uh, just to use the IBL node in in IRA plus.